Let's talk about the Facebook Conversion API and how it helps to improve the performance of your music promo campaigns. Hey, it's John here at Hypedit. We just upgraded Hypedit to support Facebook Conversion API across all smart links, pre-saves, download gates, link gates, and what have you. And I thought it would be a good idea to share this video about the Facebook Conversion API. I wanna talk about what it is, how to use it, and how it helps improve the performance of your music promo campaigns. So let's dive right in and talk about what it is. Right now, if you're running ad campaigns on Facebook and Instagram, chances are you're utilizing the Facebook pixel in order to track the action that fans take on your content. Let's say you have a smart link or a pre-save or a download gate or a link gate and fans visit that page and they click buttons on that page, maybe to go over into Spotify or into Apple Music, the Facebook pixel that you've installed on those pages attempts to send data about those button clicks and about those visits over to Facebook. And this is really valuable because if Facebook knows that a particular group of people, a particular group of fans interacted with your music and your content in a specific way, Facebook can learn what this group of people has in common and then try to serve your promo campaign to more similar people and thereby get you better and more engaged fans, right? So that data and that kind of tracking is really, really valuable for the performance of your campaigns. But now what's happening is that more and more people on the internet use ad blockers, privacy software or, or privacy settings in their browsers that suppress the Facebook pixel from sending data over to Facebook. So Facebook sees less interactions that your fans are having with your music and that can impact the performance of your campaigns. And this is exactly where the Facebook conversion API comes in because the conversion API does not rely on a connection between your fans browser and Facebook. The conversion API uses a connection between the server of the software that serves up the website and Facebook. Right. So in case of hyped it, let's say a fan visits your smart link and clicks on a button that takes them over to Spotify. Now, the browser with the Facebook pixel installed will send that information over to Facebook or will attempt to send the information, assuming the fan doesn't use any kind of, again, ad blocker or privacy settings that wouldn't allow that. But in addition, hyped it server also recognizes that button was clicked and will send the same information over to Facebook. So it builds a more resilient system because the same button click gets now reported both from the browser and from the server. And that means in case fans use ad blockers and any kind of technology that suppresses the Facebook pixel, Facebook will still receive the data from the server. Right, So you get more of your overall visits and clicks and fan interactions reported into Facebook. And with that additional data, Facebook can do a better job of learning about your audience and optimizing your campaigns. Now, I want to add a quick note here about the whole iOS 14 discussion with Facebook ads. The Facebook conversion API does not, quote unquote, fix the iOS 14 issues, all right? What Facebook has done with iOS 14 in response to Apple's uh, privacy updates with iOS 14.5 is basically say, look, if somebody opts out of tracking on their device for Facebook and Instagram, then we will not count any kind of events or any kind of data that we receive from those users because they opted out of tracking and we have to adhere to this. We cannot, we cannot track their data. The same is true for the conversion API. So if a fan visits your page on an iOS 14.5 device and has opted out of data tracking, it doesn't mean that the server technically served up the information to Facebook. Facebook will still have to ignore this information and comply with the opt out decision that the user has made. So in this regard, the Facebook conversion API is not a fix for the iOS 14 updates that Facebook made. But nonetheless, it does enhance data tracking for a lot of situation where it's an ad blocker or a privacy settings in the browser that suppress the pixel. So 
I definitely recommend that you implement the Facebook conversion API for your campaigns. It's really, really easy to do. It'll probably just take you a minute or two. And I want to show you how to do that on my screen. So uh, let's jump into Facebook. I'm inside Facebook Ads Manager here. And what I did is I went to the Events Manager. Setting up the Facebook conversion API really only consists of two steps. You need to generate what's called a Facebook conversion API access token, and then you need to share this token with Hypedit. And I should also mention that the conversion API works alongside the pixel. So you need both the pixel and then the conversion API access token in order for this to work. So the first thing is that we need to generate this access token, and this is what we do in our Facebook ads account. So once you're in your events manager, just come up here to settings, and then you scroll down until you see the conversion API section, and just click this button here, or this link that says generate access token. It generates this access token here. You want to copy this to your clipboard by clicking the button here. And Facebook also lets you know that this token isn't saved anywhere inside of Facebook, right? So the moment you refresh the page or you leave this page here, this is going to be gone. So you want to make sure you store this in a safe place where you can look it up again, because otherwise you have to regenerate it. The best place that I recommend where to store it is inside the Hypedit account settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to, this is one of my Hypedit test accounts here. I'm going to go to the account settings. I'm going to scroll down to the tracking pixel section and I'm going to add the access token here at the account level. That's That way I can never lose it. I can always add it to all my smart links and my pre-saves and my gates. Just click the little plus icon here. For the type, we're selecting the Facebook Conversion API token. I'm going to give it a name, and I recommend that you use the name that you're using on your ad account. That way you always know that this token belongs to that specific ad account. I'm just going to call it John Gold Demo, which is consistent with the pixel that I've already added here before. And now we're just going to paste the token in hyped it right here and then I click save and I'll just give it a second to refresh and now I have the Facebook conversion API token stored inside hyped it and now I can add it to any of my smart links pre-saves or gates and I have a couple different ways to add it so let's say you already have a bunch of smart links and pre-saves and things like that and they all run on the same pixel it's really easy because what you can do is just come here and you can say add this to all existing gates and links right so that way you don't have to click into i don't know 50 individual smart links or something like that just to activate the api token you can just automatically add it to all of those at the same time now just a reminder this only works if you also have that pixel that same pixel that goes with the same ad account on all of those smart links pre-saves and gates because you always want to match this pair right wherever you have a different pixel you also need the token that goes with that specific pixel but let me also show you how to add this manually to any of your gates or smart links so whenever you create a new smart link or whenever you open an existing smart link again or pre-save or gate to edit is always the same step you can come to the tracking pixel section here and you notice that you have the pixel id and the conversion api access token if you have stored both of those at the account level in hydra it's real easy because you just click in here and you select them and bam, now you're ready to create the smart link, this pre-save, this gate, and you have all the tracking information for Facebook ready to go, including your pixel and the conversion API. Now, last thing I wanna show you is the impact that the conversion API has on your tracking in Facebook. I wanna show you how to validate that this is working because the pixel helper, the Facebook pixel helper that you'd usually use to validate that your Facebook pixel is firing correctly off of your smart links or pre-saves or gates, right? That doesn't work for the conversion API token because the token sends from the server. It does not show up in the browser. But Facebook gives us an option to check this. So I'm just gonna come back to the events manager here and I click on the overview. When you come down here to the events table, 
you notice that for the events coming in from Hypedit, Facebook Events Manager now shows us a connection method column and it says browser and server here. This is already showing up for the SmartLink visits. And what that means is that Facebook is receiving SmartLink visit events both from the browser, again, that's the pixel, and from the server, that's the conversion API. So this is the immediate validation that the conversion API is firing correctly and is sending events over to Facebook. And if you want to find out a little bit more, you can open this drop down here and view the view details page. It'll obviously show you a table of all the different events, but also certain details that you can look up. We won't look through all of those, but I want to show you the event overview. This is where you can see an overview of all the events coming in, right? You see the browser pixel events here, you see the conversion API events, and an overview of how these events were processed or deduplicated. I will point out for this demo here that the number of conversion APIs here is so low because I believe I'm looking at a 28 day time frame and I just implemented the conversion API. So the reason why these numbers aren't more equal or identical is that you know this represents a full month of data and this only represents a couple hours of data. But this is all validation that the Facebook conversion API works. Facebook is getting that additional data in and uses it to help improve the performance of your promo campaigns. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if this whole topic of Facebook and Instagram ad campaigns for your music is something that's new to you, but you understand how powerful it is and you want to learn more about it, then I invite you to check out a link that I'm leaving below this video. It takes you to my Spotify Growth Engine coaching program. It's a coaching program where I take a deep dive into the workings of high impact Facebook and Instagram ad campaigns specifically to drive Spotify followers, Spotify streams, and Spotify listeners. It's an extremely powerful promotion method. It gets results instantly, and there's almost no limit to where you can take this. Hundreds and then thousands of music artists in our community have gone through this program and gotten amazing results. So just click the button below. It'll take you to the homepage of the Spotify Growth Engine where you can see everything that is included, everything I'm teaching in this program. You can see tons of tons of success stories and testimonial from other artists who've been through the program. Just click the link below this video. I hope to see you on the inside and I can't wait to also see you in my next video. Cheers.